Welcome to Electron Line. Let's take the iceberg that we dealt with in the previous video and let's add one more aspect to this. Let's say that a polar bear comes swimming along and wants to take a break and wants to climb on top of this small iceberg. Will the iceberg be able to give the bear some rest or will the weight of the bear cause the iceberg to sink? Now, bears are actually very good swimmers. Bears have been known to swim all the way from Greenland to Iceland across the open ocean, but Sometimes they want to take a break, so when they get to an iceberg, they maybe want to climb on top of it and take a break, maybe take in some sunshine, warm up. So, that's the question. Can the bear stay afloat on top of that iceberg? So we know now that the additional weight of the bear will push down on the iceberg. So we have the additional weight, mg, of the bear, which will require additional buoyancy force. So, additional buoyancy force, which is going to be equal to the weight of the displaced liquid. In other words, this would be the additional liquid the iceberg can displace. Hopefully, you don't need all of it in order to be able to keep the iceberg afloat or keep the bear above the water. So how do we do that? Well, the weight of the displaced liquid is going to be equal to the mg of the displaced liquid. And of course, realizing that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume, then this would be equal to the density of the liquid times the volume, the additional volume. So let me write it as delta V, the additional volume displaced of the liquid, and times G. And of course, for the bear to stay above the water, you want the weight of the displaced liquid, which is equal to the additional buoyancy force offered up by this additional piece of ice, that has to be greater than the weight of the bear, or at least equal at the very least. So you want the additional buoyancy force to be greater than or equal to the weight of the bear, which means that you want the density of the liquid times the additional volume of the displaced liquid times g to be greater than or equal to the m times g of the bear. Again, you can see that the g's cancel out on both sides of the equation, so you want the product of these two to be greater than the mass of the bear. The density of the liquid, well, in this case, it was 1,030 kilograms per cubic meter. And the additional volume, which we calculated in the previous video, 0.763 cubic meters, and if you want to know how to do that, simply go to the previous video, you'll see how, and that has to be greater or equal to the mass of the bear, a mass of 500 kilograms. So that's the question. Is it indeed greater? So let's find out with a calculator. 1030 times 0.763 equals, and it looks like it is. Lucky for the bear. The amount of ice that's left above the surface, 785.9, I'll make it 786, round it off to the nearest kilogram. So the additional ice above the surface can support an additional 786 kilograms, which is greater than the weight of the bear, and therefore the bear can get on top, take a break before continuing on his swim. That's how it's done.